damned if he do, damned if he don't. The boy is man before he chooses to be. Land locked and familiar with heaven too soon. No, no, stay alive. Longer pauses before goodbyes. Bodies record hugs like favorite shows. Is the man dreaming? In his dreams, is he still whole? Chase that paper, make them happy, spread his wealth like wings. Church ain't filled up like it used to be. Too many people got too much faith. The man is leaping in. Ain't enough time to test the water. Ain't even learned to swim till he started drowning. Does he know how to breathe? Climb the highest tree, grab a piece of the breeze, follow the wind and taste the crumbs of freedom. Still, he will want the whole world in his mouth. He is tall, but it must remain a secret. Press his fingers into earth, bend his knees, align his footing, lower his waist, keep his eyes on what's on the other side. The heat ain't going nowhere, dust off his brow. He made the world, now he must make himself on his mark. Go. My name's Manny Rubianes. I'm Sinclair Hall, S-I-N-C-L-A-I-R-H-A-L-L. -L. Grew up in Northern California in Stockton. Good question, man. Uh, <laughs> I grew up in 19 different homes all throughout California. So, I mean, most people assume I'm from a military family, but truthfully, I'm just one of five boys with a single mother. So I'd say California, whether it be Oakland, Rancho Cucamonga, Upland, Orange County, I mean, Sacramento, lived in San Diego, so literally everywhere. No, I mean, so far as education, I mean, so my mom definitely thought education was very important, but just given the resources and the time, it wasn't something that actually resonated with us from her. Uh, for me, again, with the even as I look back at like the other four, uh, I'm the I'm the I'm the only one out of the five to have gone to any college whatsoever. I'm also the only one out of the five to not have a child in high school, probably because there was nobody trying to have a child with me in high school. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> so it wasn't for lack of effort, right? Uh, but that serendipitously gave me a path, a clear path, um, to uh, to get into college. Uh, and. I would honestly say that when it came to me and when the seed was actually planted, my mom was studying at the local community college, Chafee, and I remember she was also a teacher's assistant. And what I remember specifically is that there was a, there was a, one of the students in our class, his name was Howard Chen, I remember that to this day. And he had gotten, he had gotten into, into Berkeley, he transferred from Chafee College in Rancho Cucamonga to UC Berkeley. Our mom was super excited about it. She was so happy that one of her students that you know was in her class that she was TAing uh, got into Berkeley. And uh, I remember just thinking about that. And I was like, man, I want to go mom that proud as well. So I want to go to Berkeley. At this point, I'm, you know, I'm basically a poster child for social promotion. So I'm not doing anything academically. Uh, but I was like, I want to go to Berkeley. And if I'm being honest, I didn't even know Berkeley and Cal were the same thing. Because I love Cal football, but I had no idea Berkeley and Cal were one and the same. And so, uh, you know, without any guidance or even direction, somebody to consult with in those things that many people have, I just went to the phone book and started calling everybody whose last name was Berkeley. And eventually somebody who had the last name of Berkeley but wasn't connected told me to reach out to this random woman in Claremont who does something with helping kids get to college. Once I graduated high school, I knew you know, I wanted to go to school. Uh, just didn't necessarily have the means to do it, so um, <clears throat> ended up working quite a bit. Started off at the junior college, so the community college, more affordable option. And I think one of the biggest challenges I had was just having money for like transportation to and from school because, you know, didn't always, never, never had a new car, so it was always you know, something wrong with a used car that I had. Had to work on it myself, because it's not like you had money to pay for a mechanic to fix the car. And then paying for books, and you know, tuition wasn't too expensive at the community college, but just being able to afford like books. And I didn't have a laptop because I didn't have the money for it, so um, I spent a lot of time at the library, but uh, a lot of the junior college facilities that they have, they didn't have a ton of resources, so it was definitely difficult trying to navigate you know, going to junior college, working, um, having a schedule that didn't conflict with, you know, with one another. Uh, so that was definitely a big challenge. That's why I spent a good portion. I spent about eight years at junior college before I actually moved down to Long Beach. The legal system was like, you need to, you're smart, you're intelligent, you just haven't applied yourself. And so they began to give me resources and things like that to focus on um, trying to go to college. And, you know, after, uh, you know, in a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, I was able to actually get into uh, numerous schools. Um, and funny enough, I didn't choose to go to Berkeley because when your family doesn't talk about education, you think college sports. So I was like, oh, I want to go to Duke because I love Duke basketball or Kentucky. So I committed to go to Duke. Um, and because uh, I got out there and as somebody who's, so I'm, I'm black and white, so it's, it's, it's your own identity uh, issues with that. But going, leaving California and going to a place that is so bifurcadian, 
um, with the blacks and the whites, and it was not so long after the uh, the uh, stripper rape case and the lacrosse team, I just didn't feel comfortable, so I decided to just drop out and go back home. Little did I know that my requirements for probation that I did go to college, and so I reached out to my initial dream school, Berkeley. Met with the dean, we had a conversation, and uh, he gave me the opportunity to come there uh, as a full-time student. Like working at the local, you know, shoe store, working at the mall. I did. I've worked all those jobs. I worked at Five Guys. I worked at the mall. You know, um, Panera. But I worked. A ton of food jobs as well as like working at the mall so I like that's all I knew once you get to school past that you usually get opportunity to get exposed to like different things that you don't know what's out there yeah right and now all of a sudden you know I basically am wearing a jersey and I got like you know all their names on my back you know what I mean just and, and, I, and I, it feels good um, it feels even the most confident person can have doubt sometimes and I think that when I sometimes lose confidence in myself I remember that these people believe in me because they're not just saying it, they're actually putting these behind it, right? Whether it be money, whether it be effort, whether it be energy, whether it be just a call of support that they didn't have to do just to call me and just be curious about things like that and say, how are, how's school going? Um, I mean, that's, that's, I mean, just how is school? Like that simple question that if you ask a, a fourth grader that question, how is school going? And they're going to tell you how it was going and they're going to feel like they're going to need to do better in school so they can answer it positively. I didn't have that as a kid. Nobody really asked that question, so I didn't care. But now I have people who ask me those things. This is one thing I've learned as I go through life, is self-doubt can kill you. Do not doubt yourself in any situation. Um, when I was busting tables, actually, I'll take a step back. When I was doing uh, washing dishes at uh, a pizza place, I never thought I'd be able to be a buster because I thought it was over my head. Once I became a buster, I was like, oh, I can do this and I did busing for a little bit and then I went to a restaurant and was like, there's no way I could serve because managers told me, oh, you can't serve, you don't know how to serve, you never served before. And then once I became a server, I was like, I'm really good at this. Why, why, would you, you know, why would you tell me I couldn't do something? Don't let people tell you you can't do something because they can't do it themselves. Um, and never doubt yourself. The best way to, to fall is to fall forward. So if you have the opportunity uh, to do something, go do it. Coming from Long Beach, just coming from the JUCO, you know, the whole transition, um, it was a David and Goliath type experience because it seems like there's no one in your corner but you. <laughs> and you got to keep that, that mindset of, I'm going to tackle whatever comes my way, you know. And when I was at Long Beach State, I think the biggest thing is, is, is small steps. It's like little things that, that you have to do that other people won't or don't think about doing that'll put you, you know, in the path to success. So sitting in front of class. Just something simple, sitting in front of classes, it forces you to pay attention, going to class, stuff like that. Um, and then in coming to, to, to UCLA, uh, you know, I thought, for whatever reason, I just thought everybody, I thought I was gonna be overwhelmed a bit, and I thought everybody was, for whatever reason, here on the level of intelligence. Intelligence only takes you so far, and people, you'd be surprised that coming from Long Beach State, you think, oh, people at Long Beach State aren't as smart as people at UCLA. That's not necessarily the case. There are people at Long Beach State that are, you know, in terms of intelligence, are far more superior than people at UCLA. But I think the, the, the differentiating factor is, do you have, you know, that hustle, that grind? Are you, are you willing to put in the work? How bad do you actually want it? Because the people that put in the work, and if you have driving motivation, that'll trump intelligence, like, every time. Go Bruins, right? Just in case it's a full raid through. I mean, Berkeley's where the heart's at, cause that's, but uh, I'm at Anderson, I'm happy to be here. So, uh, I mean, I'm really happy to be here uh, at Anderson. Like, I don't think, and again, like I, you know, I got a, my friend Manny is another person I think really understands what I mean when I say that. Um, and it's every day I feel like I wasn't supposed to be here, and I genuinely believe that. And the fact that I was fortunate enough to be able to, whether depending on what you believe in, which deity you follow, which science book you read, I was blessed, or the experiment went haywire, and I was the anomaly. However you want to look at it, I'm here, and I appreciate all those involved. Uh, so like I came up through LA in the '90s and uh, late '80s, early '90s. Uh, it was a medical magnet high school. I wanted to be a doctor at first. Uh, but after I got into college, I ended up wanting to, uh, I ended up discovering a passion for writing that I didn't really know that I actually had. Um, <clears throat> the way that I got into what it is that I do, I'm an English professor at Cerritos College, uh, was really interesting, um, only because I wanted to go in and be an ER physician, and I had a special emphasis on uh, cardiovascular surgery that I wanted to actually kind of pay tribute to, and that I wanted to kind of focus and realize is my dream. Um, but then I had to take all math and science courses uh, when I was done with like my GEs. I didn't do too well. I was actually, I wasn't too successful at that. <laughs> um, 
but what was interesting and I would actually say you know arguably I wasn't too successful at that I would say that I was very successful because I made a discovery at that moment it was a life-changing discovery started to realize how it is that I learned and how it is that I began to recognize patterns best uh, and what I realized stood in stark contrast to the narrative that I'd been told for so long throughout my uh, my own life really my narrative uh, uh, the narrative of, you know, some people are actually really, really good at math, you know, some people are not, you know, um, all you have to do is just, you know, do really, really well on your tests and, you know, then you're gonna, you know, be successful in life and, you know, you'll be able to become a doctor and all that good stuff. She said, yo, why don't you try English? Uh, there's not really that many uh, young black folks, especially black males who are in this field right here. You'd be like one of the few and you could also too do some really cool stuff in it. You know, you got to learn how to be a better writer for sure, but you got the, the basic foundational skills of what it takes in order to be successful in it. In my head, I was thinking the entire time, this is back like when we had AIM, low key, right? Like AOL Instant Messenger, she hit me up on the chat, right? Bam. <laughs> and in my mind, I'm sitting up here thinking, I ain't typed this, but I'm like, man, I don't want to be stuck reading books and writing papers for the rest of my life. Like, I ain't finna do that. I got parties to go to, like, <laughs> it's, it's popping right now. Spring Splash is about to happen. E40 and Busta Rhymes are coming tomorrow I got a party to go to maybe stuck reading books and writing papers for the rest of my life but I mean she was who she was for me so I trusted her judgment more than I but I trusted my you know my, my desire to party so I went on over to the English counselor's office and was like this is my situation uh, this is where I'm at she's like you're too far along in your major we don't really we don't typically accept folks like who are this far gone in their major as a biological sciences that's how it's kind of coming in so I'll give you one chance I can't not be a connective tissue, right? A bridge, like the work that I do at the community college is the reason why I chose this particular space, as opposed to some other spaces, right? To come in to build a career at, right? To, to kind of take on the, 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 the gauntlet, right? To, to take up the gauntlet or take up the, the mantle of a community college teacher, right? Is to be able to create that bridge, right? That allows for people to make the transition and the decision for themselves which path do you want to actually take? The, within this larger sense, right, of this conversation, this topic, right, which path should, that, that concept, that, that question could be applied to our very students. Which path is the best path for our young folks to actually take, right, uh, to best achieve the, let's say, instead of liberation, right, we'll use the substitute that's a close correlate, the American dream, right, and what that kind of means for them. Or we could use the word success, right? and what that kind of means for students. Which is the best, best path? Should they just quite simply go right on into a community college and get right on into a CTE program, right? A career, a career and technical education program, so that way they can go ahead and get this dough, make some money, get a house, buy a boat, low key, right? And then go ahead and just start balling out on the weekends. Like, is that the, is that the best path, right? I mean, from LA, originally, originally, uh, like eighth grade in Central, moved to Dallas, uh, high school years, graduated from uh, performing arts high school out there, Booker T. Howard in DC, and I'm back in LA right now. Oh yeah, art history. Um, so that's pretty much my, has been my thing since middle school, just always being uh, different, alternative, uh, knowing that, you know, I come from a sports family and a sports background, so basketball has been just something I've always been exposed to, but even having a frame or a look of a basketball player was like number one um, way that I meet friends, I meet girls on campus, like, oh, you are you a Paul? I'm like, no, nah, I'm, in, I'm in art. Uh, so I think that, like, just knowing that about myself pretty early on, um, I wanted to build a bridge a little bit between my community and, and what my passions were, and, and just find any type of angle to serve them. So, DC in itself is like Chocolate City, and Howard in itself has its own little, like, um, especially in the black community, uh, conversation of what does it mean to, like, going to a place like Howard for undergrad and really start to think about uh, who you are in your community and how you fit in and what you should be showing. Um, you know, it's, we're not the same black person. It's weird because it's like, even though it's, it's important to be like, what part, where are you from? And even with, you know, uh, California, it's like, are you North, are you Northern California? Or are you Southern California? Or in, in Texas, you can't just say the South, that's a big arching theme. It's like, are you from Texas? Are you from Louisiana? Are you from, 
Uh, we're part of Texas, Dallas, Houston, so I think that it's surprisingly, it's a lot of community. Even though it feels so built on like separation and identity, you actually are going to be meeting, like I might be from LA or Texas, but my roommate is, you know, Jamaican, and his experience is not going to be the same as mine, but like on the outside people say it's just black. There's no such thing. See, that's a, that's a real good question, because I feel like in the arts, like my, my uh, hack to this whole thing, and I've asked this question before to billion dollar curators and who traveled the world I was like how do you form an opinion how did you start to know what you like what you don't like and it was told to me to just expose yourself to everything that you can and just constantly go you'll find that a lot of times like creative people sample or follow each other in a lot of ways so if you can start to remember key things about what one person said if you see it again you'll recognize it much like with music right if you hear that sample you're like where'd I hear this from art is no different it's just about exposing yourself um, not turning away from things that you feel like you don't like and if you don't like it, ask yourself why don't why don't I like it and it's engaging with your emotions you know I think that's really what this field is it's a lot of pressure I think because uh, it's, it's not by mistake that we don't feel comfortable when we go into these places I think that that is something that I'm learning is it's a part of keeping a certain demographic of people feeling better than or you know entitled to you know they send their kids to good schools so everything that they want to preserve is built up in in some of these spaces, especially with art, you know, um, a certain class of people were able to express themselves, a certain class of people were not historically. And so what does it mean that we are, are you know, we create so many things, but we're constantly like stolen from or not attributed or not cited. Um, I think that's why I feel like it's important for us to start to dis discover who we are when we go into these spaces because so much of it is already ours. I think when I first came into this, um, my favorite artist is Basquiat. It's, in some people's opinion, like the most elementary school artist in the way that we see him exposed everywhere and like t-shirts and, and rappers are talking about him and things like that. But I knew I could serve my community and I knew I could serve uh, in particular like young men, uh, a figure of someone who came from where they came from, has done so much in the world, and even to this day, he was never really able to enjoy what he what he put out into the world. And I think that's us so many times. We, we just create, we live, we don't know. We're gonna be something until it's over. Somebody has to tell us, and or the far extreme is like, we believe in ourselves too much and then we blow up because of all that pressure. I think um, I found a story that I could bring that into people's lives, and I've done that for years now. I started a company called Rap Legends, which is we just basically rap vehicles, customize them. Um, we also do commercial vehicles, window tinting um, for residential, automotive, commercial, which is a huge market out here. It makes me think about it differently. At first, I was thinking about it would be cool to just create a business or whatever, but now it's more like I create a business so I can just hand it to my kids. If I create it to where it's self running, it's a, it's a big identity, it's a big brand. You know, my kids could take over, take it over if they want. If they want to go to school and go to college, they could do that too. If they want to uh, work a nine to five somewhere, or whatever, they could do that too. If they just want to travel and to live their life, they have options. When I told him to start my own business and I was starting to rap it, he didn't understand it. He was more like, you're gonna start a business applying stickers. Like, like I don't get, like what, what, what's the deal with that? And even like a year or two, like two years in, like when I got the first my first trip job with United Oil, he kind of saw like, okay, you keep going somewhere with it, but then I was like, whatever. But then I got a new contract um, with a new, a, a bigger company, and I showed him like a real check on that, and then he was like, oh, like okay, like okay, now I get it. So I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the, your parents gonna want the best for you, but you know what's best for yourself. Like you know your own vision, you know what you want in life, and. Um, if you're not comfortable with wanting to be a doctor, then don't be a doctor. You have to just go hard and be different and execute. Um, the part, the, the reason we were successful is not only because we're so magical, we're so smart, whatever. It's half, half um, uh, luck, and then half we were there to just execute and, and make it happen. When we got United Oil, it's not like we went out and we talked our way into it. They knocked on our door, and said, "Oh, hey, I'm a driver for United Oil. They need some rappers. You guys rap, right? You guys do fleet jobs." Yeah, we do flea jobs. This is when we don't even know how to rap yet. Yeah, we do flea jobs. We do flea work, whatever. Um, we get the job and we execute. Like, no matter what, we're going to make this happen. We're going to make this work. Because, like, this is, there's no safety net. If we fail, it's back to getting a 9 to 5. I do not want to go back to having a 9 to 5. I like the idea of building my own brand, my own identity, and, and making money off of it and feeding my family with it.